What's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about Alexander Volkanovsky and Ilya Toporia. I want to talk about the, these two guys' mindsets going into their fight in two weeks at UFC 298. Crazy fight. It's definitely the one I'm looking forward to most at this point in time. You know, after last weekend, snoozer of a fight night card with the Lise and a mob off. Oh, my God. So forgettable. And then this weekend, we got Pfeiffer and Hermanson, which that's a good fight. But the rest of the card is it's just awful. So right now, all I'm really looking forward to in my life is UFC 298 and specifically that main event featuring the Volkman versus the El Matador himself, the Rose Master, the Bachelor, Ilya Tapuria. I can't say it quite as good as Ariel. Ilya Tapuria. Ilya Tapuria. But anyway, these guys have two contrasting mentalities right now going into fight week. And I just think it's interesting. Um, looking at the odds, uh, most sites have it pretty much a pick em. I think yesterday when I checked, Taporia was a minus 105 and Volk was a minus 120. So Volkanovsky, just the slightest little bit of a favorite there. But basically a pick em fight. Obviously, Volkanovsky's older. He's the credential champion. He's defended his belt six times. This is his ninth overall UFC championship fight. And then you got the the other edge of the sword. You got Ilya Topuria, young guy, coming up. His first uh, UFC championship fight. Uh, has only had one five-round fight before this against Josh Emmett. Hasn't really fought the upper echelon. You know, didn't fight Max Holloway. Didn't fight Brian Ortega. Didn't have to fight Yair Rodriguez. So... Some could say that he's kind of untested. Obviously, Volkanovski's coming off that head kick loss to Islam Makashev back at UFC 294. Uh, Toporia is undefeated. So it's just the perfect clash at the perfect time, I think. And it's very interesting how these guys are taking the build up and how their, you know, their separate mentalities are going to mesh on fight night. I think it's going to be a banger. And I'm, I'm going back and forth with my pick. I still haven't officially picked. I thought I had my pick. But then I listened to a couple more interviews, and I thought about it a little bit more. And then I was like, oh, what am I thinking? Obviously, it's going to be this guy. But then I thought about it more, and I'm like, no, I think I'm going to go with that guy. So I just want to take a little look at their mentalities, You know, the headlines that these guys have been making. They've been making the media rounds. Ilya Toporia was just on the MMA Hour. Volkanovski has his own channel. He was also on Freestyle Bender doing interviews. So these guys are making the rounds right now, and I think it's pretty interesting what they're saying. So uh, let's take a look. Let's take a little fucking gander at what these two are saying. All right. So you type in UFC. Uh, the biggest storylines right now are Ilya Toporia, what, what he's saying, uh, Volkanovsky, what he's up to, and then, of course, the Colby Covington nonsense. Don't even get me started on that fucking clown. Yeah, go fight Shafkat, idiot. Fucking dumbass. But anyway, Volkanovsky, let's look at this headline. I was drinking every day before the UFC title rematch versus Islam Makashev. Now, we all know Volkanovsky. He's very professional in all his interviews, a uh, very stand-up guy at all the media day obligations, all the press conferences, very respectful. You know, he'll talk a bit of, a bit of trash just saying he's going to beat his opponent and they're in for a long night. They, you know, but no low blows. You know, he, he doesn't really take it to a personal level where he's calling them names or making fun of how they live their life, stuff like that. So Volk's always had this perception of kind of being the, the perfect fighter. You know what I mean? Then the head kick comes. He kind of has that weird uh, post-fight press conference where he's very emotional. Obviously, he's freshly concussed. He's talking about how he wanted to do his head in. He kept saying that term. Do it. I want to. You know, I was just doing my head in. I was doing my head in. You know, that's up for debate. What that really means uh, to me, that means like you know, I'm I'm kind of wanting to shoot myself here, like. Uh, I don't know what to do with my life. I'm, I'm kind of depressed. I'm doing my head in. You know, what am I doing? What am I working toward? You know, shoot myself might have been a little aggressive. Might have to edit that out. But um, so, yeah, he, he kind of showed a little vulnerability. And he's kind of been elaborating on that this week. Um, obviously, he said, you know, I was freshly concussed. We all get emotional. We all get vulnerable. But the more concerning thing was what he was saying he was doing before he got the call which says right here in this headline, I was drinking every day before UFC title rematch for uh, Islam Makashev. Now, did I take Volkanovski for a big drinker? No, I didn't. 
obviously he's he's Australian. We've all seen him do shoeies uh, in the locker room after the fights. I think Tui Vasa was on his card, so he was doing a, a shoey out of a flip flop. You know, he's a grown man and he's Australian, so I'm sure he enjoys a nice beer here or there. But a lot of these guys, you know, Michael Chandler just came out. He's being sponsored by a tequila brand. Uh, obviously, Conor McGregor, we know what he does. Israel Adesanya had a DUI right before his title fight. Uh, Tai Tuivasa is always doing shoeys. Um, who else? I don't know. Pretty much everybody. A lot of these fighters like to booze. Um, it kind of is what it is, but it's more shocking when it's a guy like Volkanovski. Not that he likes to booze, but... You know, when he's admitting I was drinking every day, three to four days a week, that's a lot for a person. Um, not, I'm not judging him. I, I enjoy a nice beverage all the time. You know, I got I got I got my goods right here. So definitely not judging the guy. But, you know, three to four days a week is definitely a lot for a normal, you know, adult, uh, 40, 45 year old adult who has kids, has a family, has a full time job. So that was a little bit shocking to hear. But he did preface it by saying, you know, I've never done this. I, I have never done this, mate. Um, you know, um, it is what it is and all that type of stuff. Um, you know, I've never done this in my career. I've never had a layoff. I've always been prepared. You know, I'm big on my preparation um, and all that type of stuff. So, but this is the one time where the timing was just awful. You know, I wasn't in the gym. I was just coming off surgery. I was drinking a lot. Uh, you know, I was drinking almost every day. So it was just an abnormality for me, uh, an aberration, and it was just awful timing. Uh, but, you know, mate, all that type of stuff, uh, I'm going to be the best Volk uh, that you've ever seen me. Uh, I put all that stuff down, and uh, now I'm, I'm locked back in. Now, a couple things there that concern me. Obviously, he was coming off surgery, so he wasn't in the gym training. Um, so, you know, makes sense if you're just sitting around and you can't do your job, you can't work out. Why not enjoy a couple beverages here or there? But I don't like the cope where he says, you know, I've never done that before in my life. You know, mate, I've just never done that before. It was the worst, the worst timing, the worst timing in the world. And, uh, you know, I'm back on the horse. All right. Well, why were you doing it then? Cause you've had surgery before. I remember you were having the elbow surgery the year before. I'm sure you've had numerous surgeries and you've had long layoffs, but you've never drank three to four times a week before. Well, that's a little concerning. Why now? Why now? What what changed? And again, I'm not judging the guy. We all drink. I enjoy a beverage three to four times a week. Sure. Throw me in the bucket, whatever. But when you think about his mentality, it's like, all right, well, maybe there is something to address there a little bit deeper down. Maybe it wasn't just, you know, I had surgery. I was just enjoying my time off, mate, and uh, I took the fight. I got head kick KO'd. Uh, the post-fight speech was just me being vulnerable, me being concussed, but I put everything behind me. I'm back on the straight and narrow. Um, I'm, I'm in the gym every day. It's like it never happened. It's like it never happened. Saying it's like it's never happened is kind of a red flag for me. Uh, you definitely want to acknowledge your past and learn from it. Obviously, he's saying he's he's learned from it. He's not going to let that happen ever again. He's going to be ready for every opportunity and all that type of stuff. But again, it's just if if he's never done that before, then why now? First of all, that'd be my first question. Uh, secondly, why take the fight if you're in the worst condition and you know you've been drinking three or four times a day? You have to be extra delusional against Islam Makashev, the guy you lost to with a full camp. And then after you get KO'd, I get saying, you know, my temp, my mentality hasn't changed. The KO did not change me. I'm the same person I was, same confidence. But the line that, you know, kind of bothered me a little bit was when he said, it's like it never happened. It's like it never happened, mate. I'm back on the horse. I'm in the gym. I'm doing the spider. I'm doing the rounds with the guys. I'm putting myself in every bad position. Every bad position. Worst case scenario. I'm in the best shape of my life, mate. Crikey. But it did happen. So saying it's like it never happened and just, oh, I'll just forget about all that. All right, well, something was clearly going on there. Something was going on there. And I don't think it's gone away quite yet. Who knows if it'll show its ugly head in this fight. But it's just interesting, his mentality. He's pretty much just blocking out the not only the head kick KO, the 11 days notice, but also the, you know, the month ahead of that where he was drinking every day. Kind of just saying that didn't happen. Well, it did happen. It did happen. Uh, then we go to Toporia. This guy, whoo, 
just brimming with confidence. Obviously, he's a young guy. Never really fought on this level. His first UFC title fight. He's doing some crazy stuff, man. He's doing some crazy stuff. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Uh... Yeah, right here. So Taporia predicted first round knockout in the fight, and he says an immediate rematch won't be necessary. Now, a lot of people say, you know, I'm definitely going to win this fight. Uh, put your money on me. I can't believe I'm an underdog. I told all my friends, bet the house. Everybody put their money on me. It's a lock. How many times at the press conference have the uh, stupid ass, you know, media members asked the fighter, I, you have the last leg of my parlay. Are you a lock tomorrow night? And everybody, all the fighters say, dude, apps, easy money, easy money. I think the last one was Jorge Masvidal against Gilbert Burns. So a lot of fighters say this, but Toporia has taken it to a whole nother level. Uh, predicted first round knockout, saying immediate rematch won't be necessary. Putting out vignettes, putting out promotional videos with the Rose and Volkanovski on the TV crying, which was I I loved it. Volkanovski pretended he didn't know what it was about. Oh yeah, oh didn't he? I saw something. Didn't he have some Rose or something? I think this guy thinks he's on the Bachelor. You you saw it, Volkanovski. You know he's El Matador. You saw your face on the back. He laid the rose in the, the little mini coffin box and set it down, took a petal off. This shit was badass. So Tapori is taking it to a whole nother level. Already has in his bio on Instagram, MMA world champion. Now, this could be a double-edged sword. Obviously, if Tapori loses, this is all going to blow up in his face. But the fact that he's taking it to this level, you got to respect. You have to respect. Everybody says they're going to win the fight, but to take it to this level and put that much pressure on yourself, first round knockout, no rematch. It's going to be the easiest fight I've ever had in my life. MMA champion. After this, I'm fighting Conor McGregor. After this, I'm fighting Max Holloway. After this, you know, if Sugar Sean keeps winning, I'll beat Sugar Sean's ass. No, like, oh, this is my first title fight. You know, I don't want to look past this guy. He's been the reigning champion for over a thousand days. I, I just can't look past this. You know, my life ends, the Justin Gagey. My life ends on February 13th. And after that, you know, I'm dead or I'm not dead and I'll figure it out later. But my life ends on this date. This is all I'm looking at. No, Tapori said, fuck all that noise. I'm the shit, boy. I'm the shit, boy. And I'll tell you what, I kind of believe him. I could definitely see Tapori being the next king of the featherweights. Something about the guy. He's got the look. He's got Spain behind him. He's got the confidence. He's kind of got that Conor McGregor swag to him. Obviously, he's not as witty because English isn't his first language, although he's learning it pretty quickly. So there's just something about what he's saying that's making me believe in him that he's going to win this fight and he's going to reign over the featherweights for a while and he's going to be one of the next big stars for the UFC. I can see it now. I don't know. That's what just has me going back and forth. But then I think about it more and, you know, Volkanovsky's the man. Only lost to Islam Makashev. Looked unstoppable at featherweight. You know, he is back in the gym. I'm sure he's going to look ripped. He's not going to be bloated like he did in, in the last fight he had. He knows if he loses two in a row, people are going to start talking down on him. Oh, is he regressing? Is, is his career coming to an end? So I'm sure he does have more motivation than ever. But for some reason, it just feels like I can see through some of Volkanovsky's words. With Toporia, some about how he's carrying himself, just have me believing in him. I don't know what it is. And I don't like either guy over the other guy. I'm a huge Volk fan. I love the Volk, man. I was rooting for him against uh, Islam Makhachev both times. I like Toporia as well. Um, I, I would say I'm a bigger fan of Volk just because he's been around longer. So I've, you know, I've known about him longer and I've watched him in more big fights and been anticipating his fights more than I have with Toporia, but I like Toporia as well. So no bias. Uh, you know, I just, there's something about Volkanovsky's words right now that are just throwing me off a little bit saying it's like October never happened. And he's not going to let, you know, that situation where he's drinking a lot and not in the gym happen again. That was just because he had surgery. It seems like there were some deeper issues going on than just, you know, you had surgery, so you couldn't be in the gym. That's why you were drinking three, four days a week. A lot of people get surgery. A lot of people have to stay home and a lot of people don't. It's one thing if you're used to drinking a lot and you're like, oh, well, I'm not working. Let me continue drinking. But if you never drink, if you're a pro athlete and just because you have surgery and you're not in the gym currently, a lot of people don't just go right to drinking. They would go to, you know, maybe video games or playing with their kids, uh, taking up puzzles, reading, 
stuff like that. And again, not slandering the guy whatsoever. I love a good beverage. I got one right now in my cup. So I think it's great to see Volkanovski as a real person, a real person that has problems. I'm still a huge, huge fan of Volkanovski. This is no slander whatsoever. It's just that I feel like some of his words are a little more hollow than Toporia's. But again, that could be a complete facade. Toporia could get absolutely murked. Obviously, Volks fought the better competition. Toporia really doesn't have any big wins over big names. So that could play a factor. And again, I, I haven't made my pick on this fight yet. Just kind of going on over their mentalities and what I've been hearing in the media and my thoughts on it. So it's an interesting fight, and I cannot fucking wait. I think it's going to be a war either way. I don't think it's going to be a quick finish. I think if anybody gets a finish, it's going to come in the fourth or fifth round. I think there's going to be blood. I think it's going to be a tough-ass fight for both men. And I uh, still have yet to to make my pick. Obviously, seeing Volkanovski at pick of money is very juicy. But also seeing Toporia at pick up money is juicy as well. So it's going to be a crazy one. Let's see what happens. See you guys.